It's time for the Rural Intelligence Report with Mark Williams, ruralintelligence.com. One stop to find out what's going on in our tri-state area. And we talk about this just covering a portion of the topics and subjects and items and events that you can find at ruralintelligence.com. And uh, good morning, Mark. How are you? And good morning to you, Marshall. I am very well indeed. I'm just back from my walking the dog um, and enjoying the weather outside. Um, but we've got a really full week, um, a lot of book readings this week, which sound really interesting as well. Well, let's start off in Great Barrington. Yeah, Bard College is hosting a Professor Peter Filkins, who's going to be debuting his um, authorized biography of H.G. Uh, Adler, um, uh, which is called A Life in Many Worlds, on Monday, uh, that's tomorrow, Monday 25th, uh, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And it sounds absolutely fascinating. H. G. Ad I did, I've never heard of H.G. Adler. He died in 1988, apparently. But he was a survivor of Auschwitz and three other concentration camps. Um, and so after surviving that, he managed to still publish over two dozen books of poetry, of fiction, social science, history um, and religion, all um, really putting the story of the Holocaust and analyzing it in, and seeing its influence on our world today. So really an important writer um, and could tell his story from a real experience. Anyway. Um, this biography tells the story of uh, H.E. Adler's efforts to sort of really maintain human dignity amid all the uh, uh, systematic oppression, uh, political op corruption, and obviously this um, uh, suffering that went on in the camps. It's an amazing story, sounds absolutely fascinating, and uh, Peter Filkins will be they're at Bard College in Simons Rock in Great Barrington t tomorrow afternoon. That's Monday the 25th at 4, 4 o'clock in the afternoon if you get a chance to go along. And we go from Great Barrington to Rhinebeck, New York. Well, I thought that this was actually quite relevant as, as well with that because Oblong Books and Music on Tuesday are hosting uh, Mika White, um, who's written a book called A New Playbook for Revolution. Um, and it's uh, the, the, the book is called An End of Protest as well, actually. Um, and Mika, who was an Occupy Wall Street co-creator, he uh, was one of the co-creators of that organization. He writes about the future of activism um, and he draws on his experience. He articulates a, th uh, a theory of eight principles of tactical innovation that he believes are going to be destined to catalyze the next generation um, of social movements. So quite interesting and almost sort of uh, the other side of the story of H.G. Adler in some respects. Um, anyway, uh, he's going to be at Oblong Books and Music on Tuesday, February the 26th at six o'clock in the evening. Um, and um, he's going to be talking about how social movements are created and how they spread and how materialism limits contemporary activism to some extent. Um, and so and also he sort of reconceives protests in timelines um, which affect centuries, not days, which is also really relevant from Peter uh, from H. G. Adler's point of view. So uh, two contrasting um, sli uh, slightly different aspects of the same story, I suspect. Anyway, that's um, Tuesday, February the 26th in Rhinebeck at Oblong Books and Music. Let's move on to Lee, Massachusetts, on the 27th. Yeah, uh, my wife and I are big fans of community access to the arts. Uh, they're also known as uh, CATA. Um, and uh, at the Good Purpose Gallery in Lee, uh, they are st um, presenting Making Waves, which is an exhibition of artwork by artists with disabilities. It starts on February the 27th. And it's going to be running through April the 16th. So you've got a, a good month and a half to check it out. Um, the exhibit really features a whole series of paintings by these cata artists who use, a, who have really bad disabilities in some, some respects. And they use an innovative artistic re realization technology, which is called 
uh, well, and it's artistic realization technology, ART, um, and it's a technique to create their works. It's really quite amazing. It makes uh, people who have really limited movement and, free and freedoms to be able to uh, to produce art. Um, and uh, there will also be a Meet the Artist re opening reception um, on February the 28th. Uh, that's Thursday the 28th from 4.30 to 6.30. Um, but just looking back on it from a bigger picture, the, the exhibition is on for six weeks or so, and the gallery is next door to the Starving Artist Cafe. It's, sort of a, it's a combination space one way and another. So if you're in Lee and you're looking for a, to a cup of coffee or a, a cup of tea, uh, do pop into the Starving Artist Cafe and grab your tea and then check out the exhibition next door. It, it really is worth it. So that's, it starts on Wednesday the 27th, and as I say, it runs through April the 16th. From there, we will head on the 28th to Rhinebeck, New York again. Yep. I'm always interested in local histories of one sort or another. And um, in the Clinton Community Library on Thursday, um, at one o'clock in the afternoon, Anthony Musso is going to be there. Um, and he is actually going to, he's a local author, and he's written several books um, on the hidden treasures of the Hudson Valley. And he's going to be talking about the third volume. Um, and he's going to be illustrating um, a number of sites that he's talking about. So he's, he's found all these amazing sites in the Hudson Valley, which are absolutely historically important and fascinating and whatever it is um and he's taking a and, and he's going to be able to talk about several of them um uh, in on on thursday the 28th at one o'clock um and so it and by the way just to give you an idea volume three just covers uh, covers 55 sites in total so it really is a very interesting and exhaustive uh, list these three volumes so do check it out, um, but go and listen to him talk about some of the really fascinating sites as well. Uh, it's at 1 o'clock, Clinton Community Library on Thursday the 28th. It's just a hop, skip, and a jump now to Red Hook, New York. Well, I spotted this, and, you know, th we've been talking about all these libraries really do make so much impact on the community one way and another. And I spotted this, uh, at the Red Hook Library has set up a series of it's an eight week beginners italian language course taught by a native speaker patrizia and uh the program's free it's open to the public they do want you to register before you go so they've got the right amount of course materials and whatever it is but it really is super that uh, local libraries are setting up and are getting involved in the community this way and another. And, and um, so if you're thinking of visiting Italy in the not too distant future and you want to brush up on a little bit of Italian so you can order the better pizzas and whatever, do check it out. It's uh, the Red Hook Library on Thursday and it starts on Thursday the 28th at five o'clock. And as I say, it goes on for eight weeks. So check that out if you're looking to improve your language skills. From there, we go to Washington, Connecticut. Whose water is it and how to protect it? Yep. Um, the Gun Library is another library with it's making an impact on the community. Um, and at 6.30 on Thursday the 28th, um, they're having uh, another of the Harwood Lecture Series. And as you say, it's the Washington Environmental Council who are presenting um, this t talk t uh, entitled "Whose Water Is It? What to, what, what to Know About Connecticut's Water and How to Protect It." Um, it's going to be a talk with a visual presentation. It's going to be delivered by a Washington resident, no less, Hugh Rogers, who is a Rivers Alliance of Connecticut board member. So he really talks with a great deal of authority, and I think um, water and it's going to be a major theme over the next few years as we have to protect our water courses uh, over the uh, over our whole area. So that's at the Gun Library, 6:30 on Thursday, the 28th. Going to head up north now from Washington, Connecticut, to Williamstown, Massachusetts, on the 28th. Yeah, a lot of uh, listeners will be familiar with Eileen Miles, and she is going to be up at Will uh, Williams College um, in Williamstown. 
um, on Thursday the 28th. And she writes poems, fi- uh, fiction and essays about art and other things. She's, she's published more than 20 books in total. Um, she's been a recipient of, the Guggen- of a Guggenheim Fellowship, um, an Andy Warhol Creative Capital Arts Writers Grant. She's had won four Lambda Book Awards. She's won the Shelley Prize um, from the PSA, and um, she's uh, she's had a Poetry Award from the Foundation of Contemporary Art. So she is a lauded writer one way or another. She's going to be at Williams College on Thursday evening, the 28th, uh, uh, and talking about and uh, having a conversation about her books and, and readings. So check that out if you're a, an Eileen Miles fan. Well, then we'll just go from Williamstown down to Stockbridge, actually West Stockbridge, to the Six Depot Roastery and Cafe. Yes, yes. Well, they, uh, they uh, we talked about Kata and the Good Purpose Gallery in uh, Lee, um, and not so far away, if you're going to be in town from the, uh, in West Stockbridge from March the 1st through April the 15th, um, there is another art exhibition, um, and it is the 30 Under 30, number three. It's the third annual exhibition featuring the work of 30 young artists living in and around Berkshire County. Um, and by the way, um, so go and get your coffee. Uh, I recommend coffee at the uh, Six Depot Roastery and Cafe, although they do do tea. Um, but the coffee is pretty amazing. Um, and um, there will be an opening reception and installation dance performance by Anna Rogovoy on Sunday as well. That's Sunday, March the 3rd from 4 to 5.30 in the evening. So if you're in the area and you're looking for a cup of coffee, don't hesitate to stop by um, at Six Depot Roastery and Cafe. And, and this exhibition starts on March the 1st. It runs through April the 15th. So you've got plenty of time to wander around and check out these uh, 30 uh, paintings um, or artworks uh, from artists under the age of 30. Well, let's go over to uh, Millbrook, New York. Yep. Yeah. So the Kerry Institute is really a fantastic uh, facility which... Um, uh, has so many talks and lectures, uh, it's really worthwhile sort of reinforcing the, the message from that. Uh, and it's based in Millbrook, or it is in Millbrook. Um, and on Friday, March the 1st at 7 o'clock in the evening, um, Ruth DeFries is going to be there. Um, she is a MacArthur Genius Grant recipient um, and a, re- a sustainability expert. And she will be at the Kerry Institute to discuss a book which is called The Big Ratchet, which is um, actually uh, a a really optimistic exploration of the uh, adaptability and resilience of people. Um, And so the talk she's going to be giving is how humanity thrives in the face of natural crisis. And I guess we've got uh, some big crises going on uh, generally in terms of the environment. And so uh, her story is quite interesting. She's, she covers the leaps in knowledge and, and, and the technologies that have allowed us really to produce unprecedented amounts of food and energy from the earth. Um, and in addition, she is able to argue that we can learn lessons from that and from nature um, about how we can tackle some of the big uh, issues that face humanity um, and she actually argues that uh, humanity will continue to prosper even in this uh, really increasingly complex and, and problematic world. So uh, a really interesting story. That's at the Kerry Institute at 7 o'clock on Mar- Friday, March the 1st. From the Kerry Institute, let's head over to Stockbridge, Massachusetts on March 2nd. Yeah, Saturday, Saturday is some, uh, an interesting talk. Walter Karnofsky is, uh, is going to be in town at the Berkshire Botanical Gardens. Um, he's written a book called Cultivating the Designer's Mind, The Principles and Process of Coherent Landscape Design. And he's, Walter's been in this business for 60 years. He's been studying, teaching, and practicing landscape design. And this book is really uh, intended uh, for all land-related professionals, so landscape architects, 
um, architects generally, actually planners, engineers, but it's also very, very accessible to the regular gardeners and people who own land in the area. And so he's going to be at the Berkshire Botanical Gardens, and uh, and he's going to be talking about some of the uh, also some of the sources that have been personally inspiring for him, um, and have really made. Uh, an impact on his the way he has designed gardens so i think it will be really interesting if you're looking at redesigning your garden or um or you've bought some land and need to to work on uh how you've uh, you put it into practice so really interesting it's berkshire botanical garden uh 10 o'clock in on saturday march the 2nd Let's move on from the Berkshire Botanical Garden, uh, and uh, we'll move on right now to uh, the Colebrook Wildlife Sanctuary in Sandusfield, Massachusetts. Yes, well, we just talked about uh, cultivating uh, the and landscaping. Well, this is quite interesting, because in Sandusfield, you have a real chance on Saturday, March the 2nd, to get a sneak preview of the newest Berkshire Wildlife Sanctuary. Uh, it's uh, it, it's called the Coldbrook Wildlife Sanctuary. It's in Sandersfield and Otis, um, and it's not officially opening for a few weeks yet. Uh, so you will have to. It's a work in process. You'll have to strap on some of your. Uh, there'll be snowshoes available or micro spikes, um, and it's a chance to hike and to track wildlife, identify trees. And all of that type of thing in this new um, forest and wetland. Um, it's um, it's a Mass Alderman property, um, and it's a great that they are putting in the effort to build new um, wildlife sanctuaries in the area. So absolutely fantastic. So that's March the second, 10:30 in the morning, out there in Sandersfield. Uh, check out uh, the exact location on uh, on their website. You can get there via Rural Intelligence. Let's go from there back to Lenox, Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah, on Saturday, uh, the Mount is also uh, hosting an event at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, uh, they are, are hosting Sejia Harriman, um, who's written a book called Wayward Lives, Beautiful Experiments. Um, and uh, it's all actually presented by the Multicultural Bridge Organization. We talked about them before. They're, they're really doing great work in the area. Um, and it's a reading and conversation with Sadia Harriman, um, who's the author of this book uh, called Wayward Lives, Beautiful Experiments. Um, the, the book uh, examines a social revolution, which, frankly, I was not really aware of, um, it's uh, the social revolution of the intimate changes that and uh, intimate lives that occurred in the black quarters of New York at the beginning of the 20th century. It sounds absolutely fascinating. Um, it, it really tries to recreate the experience of young black women who wanted an existence different from the one that had been, I guess, preordained for them. Um, and they shaped a cultural movement um, in New York that really transformed uh, the their experience of New York and the urban landscape they were in. So that's uh, absolutely fascinating. It's The Mount on Saturday, March the 2nd at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Hudson, New York might be our next destination on March 2nd. Yeah, this is a, a really good cause, uh, and it's a concert to benefit the kids he need, the benefit kids need music. So it's uh, again at another local library, the Hudson Area Library, at 3 o'clock on Saturday, March the 2nd. Um, and it's a concert where Joel Pichon will be playing violin, Volsi Pelletier is going to be on the cello, and Gilly Malmed-Lev is going to be on the piano. They're going to be performing music from Mendelssohn, Brahms, and Tchaikovsky. All the proceeds from this concert are going to be used to purchase or repair instruments so that more children can participate in the Hudson City School District Band and String or uh, Orchestra. So really good little uh, cause there uh, at the Hudson Area Library at 3 o'clock on Saturday, March the 2nd. American Pop in Stockbridge on the 2nd. Another of our area's libraries is uh, involved this time. So Saturday, um, 
four o'clock in Stockbridge Library. Um, they're continuing the library's speaker series, and this week it features Snowden Wright, who's a foam, former Stone Court writer in resident, um, and he's published a new novel which is called American Pop. It's a, it's a saga of family, ambition, passion, and tragedy. Um, and it's all about a, um, uh, an unforgettable southern dynasty called the Foresters, who are founders of the world's first major soft drink company, which I wonder which one that can be. Anyway, it's a, it is actually a, uh, it's a novel, but I think it's, uh, it's all set in, against the backdrop of more than a century of American cultural history. So it's really interesting. He's going to be, so the author is Snowden Wright. He's going to be there at the library talking about and reading from his book. That's at four o'clock at Stockbridge Library on Saturday, March the 2nd. I go back to Lee, Massachusetts on March 2nd, back roads of France. Yes, well, you, uh, you know what a sucker I am for wine tastings. And also, Chez Nou is a wonderful, wonderful French-American restaurant in uh, Lee. And on March the 2nd, they are having a wine dinner, which sounds absolutely fascinating. They've got Steve Dixon to come along and lead um, the diners on a sort of a journey through uh, France uh, they have their French menu uh, from the uh, from the restaurant, and then they are going to bring in a whole series of wines from um, often different or lesser known regions in France. Um, the, um, the he Steve Dixon works for Vineyard Road, and they're a wine importer that focus on rare and fine wines from all sorts of different areas in France, not necessarily the ones you would think of. So uh, if you're looking for a lovely wine dinner on Saturday, March the 2nd, check out uh, Chez Nou. You'll have to make a reservation in advance um, and check out their dinner. It starts at 6.15 in the evening. Red Hook, New York, on March 2nd at 7.30. Yes, I spotted this, and um, uh, as you can imagine, I love podcasts, um, and uh, I listen to them all the time as I drive around the rural intelligence and Robin Hood areas. Um, so I was particularly interested when I saw this at Bard College. Um, Susan Orlean, um, the writer who wrote, amongst other things, The Orchid Thief, um, has teamed up with the actor Sarah Thayer, who has appeared in Strangers with Candy and uh, has been on Late Night with Conan O'Brien. And they have de de developed a really interesting podcast. I guess it, they want to make you cry. Actually, uh, they, they want to make you very emotional, I think. So um, it, the, the podcast is called Cry Babies. Um, and it's a funny, um, sort of touching podcast. Um, uh, they have been to the Fisher Center before, um, and this one's a live edition, so go along to Bard College at 7.30 and listen to it. And what they want to talk about is what makes people emotional, what really tickles the tear ducts, as it were. Um, and this week, they are bringing three special guests with them to Bard College. Uh, Michael Ian Black, Karen Chi, and my, one of my favorites is Gary Steinhardt, um, and, uh, who we've talked about and has actually just been in the area recently published, uh, publicizing his uh, recent book. Um, all fascinating uh, people to talk to. And uh, really what they're trying to do is find out what makes them emotional and uh, why they get emotional about these things. So it's, it is fascinating what, uh, one way and another. So that's at Bard College, 7.30 on Saturday, March the 2nd. We will move back on to Rhinebeck, New York. <laughs> yes. Um, well, as I said earlier, I love uh, history. Um, and Clinton Town Hall um, at, at 7 o'clock um, on Saturday evening, um, they're presenting um, a, a really important night, and I'll, I'll explain why. It's a night of storytelling, um, and it's all to benefit the uh, Pleasant Valley Free Library. Um, and uh, the... They have brought four storytellers in. There's the playwright Lauren uh, Letelier from the uh, people will know of maybe from the Ancram Opera House. She's going to be hosting and she's going to be telling a tale. Um, and the other stories are Norm de Guerre, uh, Norman 
Daguerre, Brett Lefebvre, and Jenny Seaham. Um, and as I mentioned, the, the, the donations will benefit the Pleasant Valley Free Library to help with the restoration efforts after the, they had that fire in November 2018. Uh, it devastated the building. It needs to be rebuilt. There have been a number of, uh, there was obviously an appeal, but there have been a number of uh, events to try and raise money to help with uh, rebuilding those. Um, and so that's important. And then, by the way, after this event, which is at Clinton Town Hall, there's going to be a reception with the storytellers held at the Clinton Library um, following that. So check it out. They'll be telling um, some wonderful stories, I'm sure, um, uh, on Saturday, March the 2nd, 7 o'clock in the evening at the Clinton Town Hall. Over to North Adams, Massachusetts on the 2nd. We've had a lot of serious stuff uh, we've been talking about, whether it's environmental or, or whatever, but this is not serious at all and sound, is absolutely fabulous. I know, uh, I know this organization well. So Mass Mocha on Saturday evening at 8 o'clock has got together with Jacob's Pillow to present uh, the Le Ballet Trocadero de Monte Carlo. And it is going to be really a riot. Um, I'm not sure whether everyone's familiar with it. Well, I can tell you this is the 45th, uh, 44th anniversary season of the Ballet de Trocadero de Monte Carlo. And they are the world's foremost all-male comedy ballet company um, who perform on point and on travesty, as it were. They are, uh, it's an amazing ballet company. I mean, and I, I, it is a ballet company, um, but it is hilariously funny because it is, um, I guess it's, what they, they're wearing drag, really. They are fully dressed up as uh, female uh, ballet dancers um, and they are uh, well it's 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 hilariously funny and they dance really professionally as well um, they started in the 1970s I guess and uh, they've been in uh, they've been to lots of lo uh, areas in the past they've been to the Jacob's pillow in the past um, they are you know popular it is a really fun evening and it's outright really funny dance uh, company uh, one way or another so check them out it's at eight o'clock at mass mocha on saturday march the second let's go back now to uh, sheffield and that is to dewey hall yeah dewey hall is having um a whole series of uh, concerts uh, over the winter and uh, i just thought i'd mention another one because this one's great it's going to be sort of back before because of popular demand, it's the Molskis Mountain Drifters are going to be at Dewey Hall. Um, and that's Bruce Molsky, and he's joined by Stan Weislouch and Alison de Groot. And um, they present this old-time uh, old roots music with, with the fiddle, the guitar, the banjo. Um, and they'll be playing um, on sh Saturday evening at Dewey Hall in Sheffield. And that starts at 7 o'clock in the evening. And we wrap things up, settling right back here in Sharon, Connecticut. Yes, yes. Sunday, March the 3rd, uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, the Hotchkiss Library in Sharon is going to be hosting uh, Paul, Barbara Paul Robinson. Um, and she's going to be talking about her book called Heroes of Horticulture: Americans Who Transformed the Landscape. Um, and... Barbara, it's absolutely fascinating. She um, she took a sabbatical from her law career. And by the way, um, she was the first female president of the New York City Bar Association. So um, very high powered. Um, but she went and worked as a gardener during this year for Rosemary Very at Barnsley House in Gloucestershire um, in England, and then for Penelope Hobhouse at the National Trust Garden at Tintin Hull in Somerset. So she, um, and, and she has a history of working in the gardens because she, with her husband, is the owner of Brush Hill Gardens in Washington. Um, and um, following this uh, year abroad, as it were, gardening, um, uh, she's taken time out and put it all in context and written this book called Heroes of Horticulture. Um, and it's all about um, 
the Herculean efforts of the various uh, individuals who established um, the Garden Conservancy in America. Um, and she's also talked about some of the stories who, uh, of the people who really made a big impact on gardens in America. For example, the people who preserved Central Park in New York and other public spaces uh, and more. So she's going to be talking at the Hodgkiss Library in Sharon at 4 o'clock on Sunday, March the 3rd. I think it will be a great, fascinating talk and a bit of history of America. And with that, we wrap up another uh, look at uh, an edition of Rural Intelligence on ruralintelligence.com. Mark, we'll speak to you next week. Lovely. I look forward to it, Marshall. Thanks very much.